Hello everyone, my name is Strom. Today I wanted to show some more redstone circuitry in action and what we're going to be applying it today is my design for a nether tree farm. Uh, this is nothing really revolutionary. There are a lot of nether tree farm designs out there, but this is the design that I use and I'm going to show you different circuits that are incorporated in this as you can see in the background there. And we're going to break that down by its circuits. So let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, let's take a look at the actual farm itself and what it's doing. So overall, it is growing in nether trees, either the warped or crimson variants, and then it is pushing them using a piston wall towards these TNT droppers. These TNTs are going to be dropping down onto these obsidian blocks, blowing it up, dropping into the water, getting collected down there, turning the wart blocks back into bone meal, and refeeding the bone meal back into the system. So let's just review what the overall farm does uh, right off the bat. So I just have a uh, command block set up here. All this command block is doing is going to be placing the warp fungus for us. So let me actually show you what's going on outside of the farm. Normally, as the player, you would come in here and stand on a pressure plate that would be right here. But again, I replaced it for a lever just for the purposes of this tutorial. And you would just place crimson fungus on here. So basically hold down, right click, but we don't have to do that in this version for the tutorial. It's just going to do it automatically. So I'm going to turn on the clock that's going to shoot bone meal. And then I'm going to turn on the command block clock that's going to place the fungus for us. So we can see what's actually going on here. As we can see, TNT falling down and blowing up the trees that get pushed out. So that's blowing up the stems, the shroom lights. Now you notice this farm is not completely lossless. There are little blocks that get stuck here and there, uh, but it is a renewable farm. All you need to do is feed it with uh, fungus and bone meal and the rest will take care of itself. So the losses are pretty minimal compared to everything going on here. Uh, but you can see we've got these four modules dropping TNT at a timed rate based on uh, the input of the trees and it just blows it up, sends it down there. Then what we have down here is we just have a simple item sorter that's going to sort out your different blocks, your shroom lights, your uh, warped and crimson stems, and then the rest of it is going to be placed down into this composter, turned into bone meal, shot up this water vader, and fed back up into the system where the player would normally fill it with bone meal. So uh, that will need to be renewed. This is not completely self-sustaining because those uh, warp blocks don't completely fill up the bone meal, but it does add back into itself. So that's what the farm does. Now let's get into how you would actually use the circuits inside of this. This is the farm as you would get it from the schematic that I have available, which by the way, the world download and schematic will be available for download inside the description of this video. Uh, but this is how this schematic is going to come with different colors of concrete used for the different circuits. Okay. You notice there's a lot of different colors of concrete in here. So before I go over the entire thing as a whole, I just wanted to touch on the individual circuits uh, because I do like to explain what's going on in these different redstone contraptions uh, that I'm showing off. So you can really understand what those contraptions are. Maybe use those for yourself on other applications. So what we have here is the series of circuits that are going to be used inside this tree farm. And I'm going to go over these each one by one. You'll notice I have them separated into their separate colors of concrete and they correspond with the colors of concrete that go into the system over there. Uh, so let's start over here. Uh, this is something I've covered in another video, but it's a comparator clock into a dispenser. What it's doing is dispensing bone meal onto this. And if there's a fungus there, that bone meal is going to try and grow that. To activate it, we simply need to step on this pressure plate and it's going to turn on that clock. You notice you can see it dispenser failed dispenser failed over there in the subtitles if we put down a fungus here that's going to grow that pretty quick okay another nice feature of this farm is being able to grow both warped and crimson fungus uh, in order to do that you need the different types of nylium so over here we use the warped nylium uh, but you need to switch it to the crimson nylium if you want to do that now you could do that with a pickaxe however i've included a block swapper in here this is a two block swapper. This is design uh, I learned from an El Mango video. So this is, uh, again, not my original design. Um, but what this does is it will change out this block here or this block there on a button push and then vice versa. When you push the button again, it will switch those blocks back. So I'm going to show you that works. We hit the button. It pulls the other one down, pushes the other one up and then same with this one, pushes the red one down, pushes the green one up. 
So inside this farm, we have the different types of nylium in place of the red and green concrete. Uh, but this is basically uh, an observer that faces into a sticky piston. And remember, sticky pistons getting a one tick pulse from an observer will push and then release their block if, if they have a block attached to it, or they will reach out and pull back the block if there's a block uh, with a space in front of it. So that's what that's doing. It's gonna reach up first, pull that block down, okay? That piston changing is now gonna tell these observers looking at that piston, hey, we got a fire too. So it's gonna power these orange concrete blocks, okay? Which then powers the pistons above it. So now those pistons gotta fire off, okay? So once that's pulled down, it's gonna then push this red one over to the side and push the green one in place. Since this observer is gonna see the redstone turn off when that button pops back up, it's now gonna send another one tick pulse over to the sticky piston, which is gonna force it to push its block up into the space. So the green one will push back up in there, okay? And then the red one is gonna get pushed around underneath just as a result of having those extra observer pulses. So I'll show you that a couple more times. So we see that redstone activates the observer and it pulls down the block, okay? And very quickly, this other side pushes the block into the middle. And then when this gets released, that one pushes up into that slot right there. Over here, we have the system that is actually gonna push out the stems and the leaves. So this is just a smaller version of that piston wall. Uh, you'll notice in the center here, I have sticky pistons with glass on them. That's for a couple reasons. Um, one, there's gonna need to be nylium down here and glass on top of nylium will not destroy the nylium, but a solid block on top of nylium increases the chance of breaking that nylium and turning it into another rack. So that's why we're using glass there. We're using glass here because what's actually happening is you see this redstone uh, signal coming in here and then a repeater right there. If we were to put a block in there, right there, that's now gonna send signal through the block into the repeater, which then loops back over here and activates the piston wall, pushes it all forward, which means these blocks here are gonna get pushed forward. So if this was a solid block, it's just going to stay there and keep the pistons extended and it's not gonna move forward anymore. So I'll show you uh, the way it's working and then I'll take that glass out and show you how it's not. So we can see here when we have stems there, it's doing nothing, but as soon as we place one here to complete this circuit, it's gonna push everything forward, okay? And then it pops right back. Now, if we didn't have glass here and this was a solid block like that, you would see when we place in the stems and complete the circuit, once it pushed forward, this block still completes the circuit, whereas glass would not complete that circuit. So that's why we need to use glass there, okay? So this is what we're using to push all the blocks towards the TNT. So what we have here is actually part of the same green circuit in this system that we see over here, um, but I've broken this up into uh, two options for sending redstone signals upwards vertically, okay? Almost completely vertically. As we see here, there's kind of a staircase effect here at straight vertically, but these perform two different things. Now, first of all, you'll notice on both of these, we cannot send signals down. So if I come here and hit this lever, that light turns on, but this light down here does not turn on. Whereas if I hit this lever, that light turns on and that light turns on. So we can send a signal upwards. Okay? Same thing with this one. We can turn that light on up there, but we would not be able to hit a lever up here and send a signal down there. Okay? The reason that is, is if you have redstone signal on these uh, half slabs, okay, the signal will allow itself to climb up. It's the same properties with glass as well. So you can also use glass here. Uh, those signals will jump up to the next one, but they won't be able to jump back down. Okay. This model is using what's known as a torch tower. Now this one just uses torches stacked on blocks, stacked on top of each other to alternate whether they turn on or off. And so if I turn this one off, then this one is gonna be allowed to turn on. This one is then gonna turn off, etc. So we see we switch that there. The difference between these two is on this system, on each layer, it would be an alternating signal here, okay? So uh, every two blocks would be an alternating signal. One would be on, one would be off. And let me just throw on some redstone to show you that there. So that's on, that's off, that's off, etc. On this system over here, the advantage is every single block, it goes up, you have the opportunity to come off the side with the secondary signal. So right here, that connects there, 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 and there. When I turn this on now, we're gonna see 
all of these have now turned on and it's still sending the signal up. So these have two very distinct purposes. This one is if you need to bring a signal off the side of it, but it's more of a pain to build. Whereas this one here, you can only send signals off certain parts of it, right? It's only every four blocks that you can send an on signal. However, this doesn't have any limit to how far it can go, whereas this, uh, you can only have 15 redstone dust in a line before it runs out of power. This could go up to theoretical build limit with this system here. So these are two different ways to send redstone signals vertically. This yellow and white circuit right here is the input signal limiter. And this limits how many times the signal can be sent to the TNT to drop it, okay? So every time a tree grows, it's gonna send a signal in through this green circuit, but it's only going to allow a signal to come out of the yellow circuit every four seconds so that the TNT isn't shooting itself uh, around the system. So I just have a simple observer clock set up here and I go over this system in a lot more detail in my signal input limiters video and I'll put that down in the description if you wanna see more detail on this. But basically we're using an etho hopper clock to say you can only send a signal through this block every four seconds because this piston is gonna push it out and it's only gonna come back every four seconds to allow this signal to run through here. So I've just set up a basic observer clock here, let's turn that on and we'll see this is only gonna light up a maximum of every four seconds. Now with this etho hopper clock, we are using five items in here and these are renamed filter items. They can really be any item that stacks to 64 in here uh, in order to get that optional 256 second delay. But here we're only using five items and those five items at 0.8 seconds each is gonna give us our four second delay in the signal input limiter. This is what we call a TNT duper. This is definitely a Java mechanic, not available in Bedrock, unfortunately. Um, what this is doing is it will, as I understand it, pull the piece of TNT that is lit from this detector rail into this dead coral fan, but the game will not allow that to happen saying, actually, there's a dead coral fan here. You can't have that. It will replace the TNT block here while that TNT entity has already fallen and detached. So that's how you're actually getting it to produce uh, repeating pieces of TNT. And I'll show you that here. We just have this little lever, we'll turn it on. Okay, it's gonna drop. And you notice it's it's always dropping uh, around that center block there, okay? Not exactly on it, but enough that if there was a piece of obsidian floating like we have over there, it would land on that piece of obsidian. So that's stable enough. This right here is another uh, mechanic that I have not covered before, but this is a dropper auto clock. What it's doing is it will automatically dispense whatever is in the dropper as soon as it enters. You could technically just set up a timer, a, a redstone clock on a dropper, and it will just, anytime items are going in there, it will fire off. But what you're gonna have then is you're just gonna hear that dropper clicking constantly. And that's usually considered annoying. I don't know what you're into, whatever you're into, that's fine, but I find it really annoying. So I prefer these systems where it will only fire off when there's an item in it. And you can see right now, it is completely silent until we put items in there. and it's gonna fire off. What we have here in this system, and see, this is annoying. This is this is annoying. This is annoying. I hope it stops soon. I hope it, I hope it stops soon, and there we go, we're done, okay? Works even if you only have one item in there. Okay. What this is, is a dropper will send out a comparator signal with how full it is. Now, we're not concerned with how full it is, we just wanna know, are there any items in there? So right now, the comparator is sending no signal because there's nothing in there. But as soon as at least one item enters in there, it's gonna send out a signal strength of one. And we talked about comparators before, about based on how full the container is, we'll send out different signal strengths, okay? And we'll get into that with the item sorter in just a second. So a signal strength of one comes out of the comparator and goes into this block right here. This repeater then picks up that signal, okay? And sends it into this sticky piston. The sticky piston then pushes over an observer and the observers are facing each other now, so we create an observer clock. This right here is also another alternative that doesn't use the observer clock facing into each other. If you didn't want to, for example, have to get a sticky piston, maybe you're short on slime, you didn't want to have to get the quartz for the observers, maybe you're short on that. Uh, you are still gonna need a little bit of quartz for the comparator, but this is another model which will then, anytime there's a signal in there, we'll loop back and turn on the dropper. Uh, what we're doing here is we're creating a little bit different clock. Instead of an observer clock here, we're creating a comparator clock here. Now, the reason that we have a repeater coming out of here 
is if this was just redstone trying to loop back into itself, one item would not create a strong enough of a signal to come out of there, okay? So with this repeater, now one item changes this to 15 and it comes all the way back in and then turns this back off and then turns back on, turns it back off, turns it back on. And then this right here is powering the block. So this is a slightly more silent version of that. But again, you still have the clicking. Uh, it's also a little bit slower than your observer clock. So I really prefer the observer clock with the sticky piston method uh, whenever I can. This right here is also part of the pink circuit in our system. This is the item sorter. This is the 41 stack item sorter. Okay. This again, um, I learned quite a while ago from the channel uh, Impulse SV. I do not know who originally invented this, if it was Impulse, uh, but this has become pretty standard in Minecraft. If you're looking for more information on the item sorters, I do have an item sorter video that explains the mechanics of it. But basically what this is doing is it's gonna allow us to pull out the warp stem from everything else and filter that down into a chest so that we don't try and send the warp stem, the shroom lights, the crimson stem over to the composter. Uh, which brings me to the uh, final piece here. This isn't really colored because it's not really part of a circuit. This is just a chest with a dropper, excuse me, a chest with a hopper that drops things down into a composter. That composter, when it fills up, then releases a piece of bone meal, which falls into this hopper and then down into this chest. So basically all the extra uh, warp warp block, crimson warp blocks, crimson vine blocks that come out of this, we're putting those back into a hopper and turning those back into bone meal. And we can see that coming down in there. Now we have bone meal in there. Okay. So those are the circuits involved in actually building this farm. Now I'm gonna show how they all go together in the final farm. So once again, over here, we have the version of the farm that you would get in the schematic. Now the concrete colors in the final version don't matter. They could be any solid block. You can do nether brick like I did over there. Um, it's just, separated into these different colors so that when you're building the schematic you can see what different circuits apply to each other so it's not just kind of a jumble of wires like we have over there okay so uh here we have our comparator clock by standing on this pressure plate we turn on that comparator clock which then feeds over here into the dispenser to dispense bone meal okay we also have our orange circuit right here which allows us to switch between uh, warped and crimson nylium. Okay, hit that button. We can switch back and forth between the two. We have our green circuit over here, which when activated via a tree growing, activates this whole piston wall and pushes everything out. Okay, we see over here that we have that system where it's allowing the signal to come through, but then the glass stops it so everything retracts. We have our vertical redstone signal using slabs over here. This is our signal input limiter using the yellow and the white circuits. So the yellow circuit is the signal that would be coming through to go to the TNT dupers. And the white circuit is what's being used to limit that signal of how often it can actually go through there. Okay. So a signal would come up this torch tower, go through here. This hopper clock would then activate this piston, pushing it out, meaning I can't send another signal to the TNT dupers until this piston retracts back here. That yellow circuit then is connected to the cyan circuit which is connected to the four TNT dupers. And these are what are gonna dupe each piece in TNT and drop it down onto those obsidian blocks. You'll notice uh, the obsidian block spacing, there's a little offset in them for their height so that we can actually make sure we reach those because obviously TNT is not gonna fall through those. And the schematic that you will get comes with it unloaded, okay? So when you build it, the TNT is not going to actually activate when you press this. So you're not gonna have any TNT coming down if you accidentally send a signal the wrong way. Then the way to actually load it, all you need to do is press the button on the piston. That will push the minecart and the detector rail into place. And now the system is loaded. These hoppers here in the center, you'll see all the water flows over to them. So all the pieces of the tree that are exploded are gonna go into those hoppers. Those hoppers then lead over here to our sorter system. So here we have the shroom light, the crimson stem and the warp stem. Those are getting filtered into those chests. The rest go into our composter here, which then gets fed into a dropper. That dropper then has the auto clock on it, which is gonna shoot out the piece of bone meal. It's gonna go through the waterway, up the ice path, uh, excuse me, up the bubble column, back into this dropper and then back through the system and feed right back into where bone meal is being dispensed. You'll see under here, under the obsidian, we actually have the block swapper and let me just take some of that out so you can see. 
how that's going. So that can switch the blocks back and forth. So you can change the farm mode between warped and crimson with just the push of the button right here. So to actually run the farm, all the player would have to do is come into here, shift to crouch or whatever key it is on your keyboard, but you're gonna crouch under these slabs. Once you step on here, it's now ready to go. So as soon as you plant a tree, it's gonna kick everything off, okay? And I'll show you that on the other version over here. So it's now ready to kick off. We're just gonna put the fungus in and we're gonna hit the TNT go off. So that is the circuits that are involved in my nether tree farm design. Uh, the schematic, again, will be available for a download in the description of this video, along with a copy of the world that I'm showing here as it originally was. So you can come in here and mess with these circuits and the farm at your own pace. But I hope that at least looking at these circuits allowed you to get some ideas for something that you can do with redstone and how you can apply these circuits to yourself. And I hope I will catch you later. Have a good one. Bye.